So in this video we're looking at EMF and internal resistance. Um, we've got a circuit here, it's a very interesting circuit because it's got a um, power supply of 12 volts, it's a, it's a battery, big line, little line is a cell and then dot 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 to show that there's lots of cells in between the two cells. Um, so it's a battery of 12 volts. There's nothing in the circuit as I said and um, that would indicate basically uh, zero resistance or basically vanishingly small resistance. That would mean that effectively an infinite current flows. But this doesn't happen. We don't get an infinite current. Why is that? And the answer is the internal resistance of the cell. If I was to, um, to redraw this, this circuit, um, I would, in fact let's just redraw on top of it, um, we would have a resistor here, not a fuse, so I'll colour it in so that you know it's a resistor, with a small resistance and we'd typically draw a dotted box around to show that it's the internal resistance, the resistance inside the battery itself. So you get the maximum current that can flow limited by this internal resistance. Now um, there's a couple of really uh, important things that come out of this. Firstly that this uh, 12 volts here is not truly 12 volts. If you were to connect the circuit in this way um, or connect the circuit to anything else you wouldn't get 12 volts out. You'd get a little bit less because of a voltage drop, a small voltage drop across um, the internal We're going to look at um, an example, since we've got so much time <laughs> to help us with this, um, we've got a graph of voltage against current, and I'd better draw you a circuit so you know what this is in relation to. We've got a, um, a, a voltage uh, supply, an EMF, I'll just write it as E this time. Um, and that has its internal resistance, small r, and that is in um, oops, that is in a connection of a circuit. Sorry, my drawing is getting worse and worse. There's my cell. Uh, so that's in a circuit with a variable resistor. Okay, this is an awful diagram. Please excuse that and um, just go with it. <laughs> Okay, so the voltage that we're measuring is the voltage across the variable resistor, um, and the variable resistor is being changed to adjust the current. Okay, the uh, uh, important thing to note here is the voltage across here is going to be the same as the voltage across the battery. Okay, the, what we would call the terminal voltage, the voltage with um, the voltage drop across the internal resistance removed from the EMF. Okay, so as we increase the current flow in the circuit, so as the current flow um, I increases, okay, which means the, the variable resistor, we'll call it R, uh, is decreasing, um, we should be getting a, uh, a, 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 a decreasing uh, voltage across this R. Okay, so um, what that means is we're getting a greater voltage drop across the internal resistance, Vr, small v, small r. So um, the actual voltage we're measuring will be decreasing. We can't measure for zero current, obviously, so we would have a series of readings at non-zero, and then we would draw our line of best fit, and there's this point here where no current is flowing, zero current, and that would be our EMF. Okay, so if we were to come up with an equation for this line according to y equals mx plus c, um, we would go, oops, let's keep the graph on there, the y is v, okay, which is our voltage across the resistor, v capital R if you like, or it could be the same as vs, supply voltage, equals the gradient, which is going to be the change in voltage over the change in current, okay, um, and from Ohm's law, R equals V over I. So it's going to be a particular resistance. Okay, a small R big R. We'll see. This is actually going to be the internal resistance. So I'm just going to write that in um, as small R. And X value is the I 
um, and with the gray that's negative, so we need to keep that as a negative. And then the intercept is going to be plus the EMF. Okay, and then with that, we actually have the same formula that we had early on, just slightly different rearrangement. Um, so E minus IR equals the supply voltage. Coming down to here, we can easily rearrange this to be um, this. This is a negative, and that's a positive. So we can just make it E minus I R rather than R I equals the supply voltage. Um, so that's an experiment you can do to test it. And I've done this before with a flat battery, and this is the best thing to use a flat battery. Um, and I may even put up a quick video about that. Um, you measure the, um, you take your like a nine volt battery, um, and it's flat. You know it's flat because it doesn't work anymore. Doesn't run any lights. If you put a multimeter across, across it, there's your multimeter. Boom, boom, um, and you'll get um, you'll get a pretty good reading if you just measure it like that. Um, you might get even say 10 volts if it hasn't been used for a long time, um, but it is flat and it's just sitting there. You might get 10 volts initially, but as soon as you um, connect a wire across the terminals to short circuit that battery. Um, that voltage is going to drop down to maybe one or two volts, practically nothing. And that's because a flat battery has a high internal resistance. The flatter a battery gets, the higher the internal resistance. Okay, That's a useful fact for you to know. I think we'll finish there. I might try and do a quick demo of this um, with a short video to show the um, different voltages in a flat battery compared to when it's connected to a circuit or when it's short-circuited. Um, there you go, that's internal resistance and EMF.